I know you're more of a pro wrestling fan than I am when it comes to 90s wrestling and everything like that. What was the impact and the legacy that Scott Hall left behind for pro wrestling? Man, impact and legacy? Every kid, uh, or every, I should, well, technically we are big kids, but every person my age that watched wrestling, uh, you know, during that era, has the same experience. We all threw toothpicks at each other. We all said Chico. We all, you know, said Uzi Machismo. We all thought it was cool for a bad guy to be the good guy. Um, you know, I mean, as far as the things that he did behind the scenes, too, he got wrestlers paid a lot more money and guaranteed money. Uh, he changed the business, like, inside and out. Like, literally. A lot of people kind of forget about that, you know, that, that he was, I mean, yeah, he, you know, every, we all have our demons. We all have our, our you know, things that, well, we're not, no one's perfect. But, you know, uh, the fact that he's, he, he, he literally, like, changed professional wrestling as it is. He's part of it. Even when Hulk, even resurrecting Hulk Hogan's career. Um, you know, and he was one of the best workers, the you know, storytellers, characters. I mean, who would have thought he was actually, like, I, when I was a kid, I really thought he was this Cuban dude that was, you know, with gold chains and oozing machismo. Instead, he was a white guy named Scott Hall. I never knew that. <laughs> and it was so hard for me to accept that, like, as a teenager. I was like, no way. He's Cuban. He's he's one of us. <laughs> like, yeah. He's Razor Ramon. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, how about you? Like, so is somebody like, did you watch Razor Ramon growing up, or did you watch Scott Hall growing up? Razor Ramon. So he was one of the first wrestlers when I was growing up. He was one of the first re- wrestlers that like I could recognize. You know what I mean? Like he's the person that pops off the screen, and you look at him, you like this guy is, this guy has a character. He sticks yeah. out. He's very unique. Um, it's the best way I could put it is like when I first was watching basketball growing up, I could identify Shaq because Shaq was very unique in his persona and his like build everything. Right. There was like, it was hard for you to go- not name Shaq when you wanted to like think of a player in the nineties that wasn't such a big stature. Obviously Michael Jordan, yeah. Jordan was huge, but at the same time I grew up, I was born in 92 and by the time I hit six and I had a, uh, cognitive awareness of what was going on. Shaq became a Laker. So with Scott Hall, he had that Jerry Curl coming down. He had the hairy chest. He had this so much machismo, like you were saying, with the gold chains and the intercontinental belt. And yeah. I remember just seeing this guy for what he was from WWF to then WCW. And then I remember after he made that second comeback to WWE, he, w- he was gone. And I remember watching an E... ESPN documentary. It's like about 20 minutes long. I looked it up right now. You can find it on Google if you just type in ESPN documentary Scott Hall. Um, it's 20 minutes long. And he was the first person to do a documentary for ESPN as a pro wrestler. And it literally shows the rock, uh, the rock star lifestyle that the 90s wrestlers had and the consequences of all of them doing that. When you said he had demons, this dude had demons. And I can't go into it because, like, it's literally 20 minutes and I saw it probably 10 years ago. But Scott Hall was somebody that resurrected from the dead, essentially. I'm just so glad because not everyone gets the redemption story. And I'm so glad he lived to see his and he, you know, was able to live, you know, a little more comfortable with, you know, and I I wouldn't say comfortable. I would say maybe at peace. Yeah. Uh, Because, you know, a lot of pro wrestlers don't get that. They just, you know, they just ride until the wheels fall off and that's it. Um, So it's, it was one of those things where obviously I'm very sad. I'm very bummed. Um, Like I was mopey all day. Like it just felt like, you know, huge, you know, I mean, just like, you know, we're at the age where, yeah, people are going to start, you know, passing. And he was such a huge influence on me. And, uh, you know, when I go on stage, I, I, I walk like him when he comes out and, and, uh, you know, too sweet. When I too sweet someone, when I too sweet you or whatever, I, like, think of Scott Hall. Like, that's, like, and it's little things like that. So, but, yeah, dude, he had some, you know, he partied. He partied like no other. Yeah. Um, and I think as a kid, he might be want to be like that. <laughs> like that persona of, uh, like, let's party kind of thing. Is, hey, Scott Hall. He was always drunk in WCW, so. I was also trying to look this up because, uh, like, I remember this, and I could be like, it could be a butterfly effect. I could be wrong. I'm trying to look it up on Wikipedia right now. But is it true Scott Hall has never held the World Heavyweight Championship in any of the companies he worked for? Very correct. He's like Jake the Snake. He was like a Rowdy Piper where he didn't need it. Like, to be, he, honestly, he did not need it. 
Like as as Razor Ramon, like he won the IC title, which was like the like the work like the workhorse title. Yeah. Back in the day, like it's like you know, Bret Hart had it, Mr. Perfect had it, the ones that should be next in line that worked their you know their ass off. Uh, but he didn't need it. Like he just didn't. Like he was, you know, like like I said, like he was such a highly influential wrestler. Like everything I just listed, like you know, they said, and he never won a world title. Like you know, I mean, like Hulk Hogan. I mean, his persona may him, but. Also, the fact that he's like a, you know a world champ. Same thing with Ric Flair. Yeah, dude, Razor Ramon didn't need that. He literally just had to be himself and be on the mic, and that that was it. Those are hard to come by. Yeah. Those are very generational. Yeah, he he obviously to me that's a team player because I mean you had a Kevin Nash. Not to say Kevin Nash was greedy or anything like that, but Kevin Nash needed a belt on him to like signify yeah. that he was a heavyweight champion, or like Hulk Hogan needed a championship belt, like Scott Hall was just there and like you said he was a workhorse so he was like hey what do you want me to do do you want to be to team up with the giant big show like in wcw i'll do that yeah. i'll be the tag team champion so he did whatever it took to make the company better and that's what i liked about him oh yeah i mean the nwo dude like i mean even that like he was one of the original members like he was he was the one that like, came out it, the pioneer essentially that yeah did the whole work. It. yeah I, dude i remember when i was a kid like there's two things i remember about uh like uh my favorite Razor Ramon memory was when he won the IC title for the first time. I was so excited I called my cousins because I was the only one that had cable. Like that's all. <laughs> that's all long ago was back then. And, but this the second time was him walking on WCW Nitro and going, you know, you know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here. And then he just drops the mic, and I was like, whoa! And I was, you know, I'm a big WWE guy, WWF, you know, WWF guy, and I never liked WCW. So I thought immediately, whoa! Like they're trying to attack WCW. You know, we're a kid and we're naive, we're dumb, we don't know, you know, what's real life. But even adults didn't know it was such a blurred line, like with the NWO started. And dude, I just ah, it's it's it, it sucks. It just sucks. But that's life. But you know, I, we just gotta we gotta keep saying hey yo to each other now. Hey yo, um, hey yo. And there is something that The Rock wrote. Um, I'm, did you read it by the way on his page on Instagram earlier? No, today? I didn't get a chance to read his. Kevin Nash just broke my heart. Yeah, I'm, Kevin Nash. I'm here. I, Wait, uh, before he died or after? Before he died, because oh, it's yeah. like one of those things where it's like you're saying goodbye to your best friend, and I can't imagine, like, obviously, like, I have, I can, but, like, I, I know what that pain, and it's just, even just, I know the relationship, but in, anyway, what did The Rock say? Yeah, we got about a minute left, so let me just read this real quick. Uh, no, pro no. wrestling just lost a legend in Scott Hall. Scott came from an era of pro wrestling where wrestlers were the biggest and toughest men on the planet. Scott was a big man who was athletically gifted tough as hell and inside that ring he was extraordinarily talented and an intense athlete before my match here with scott and it was all like on the smackdown back like after wrestlemania when they debuted um i made sure to tell him how much his in-ring work influenced me when i was a rookie in wrestling i would study scott's matches his style intensity crispness and his excellent in in-ring iq and psychology i studied his matches frame by frame he was shocked to hear this from me we came up in different eras. He knew I was a student of the game, but had no idea he was one of the ones I studied. He thought that was so cool, and he went out there that night and lit the F up inside that ring. It was my honor, brother, and thank you for the house. Go rest high. Man. Ah. Uh, God. That's such a... He, he's the one of the few wrestlers that could put, like, a, a, a headlock over, like, a, as a move. Like, he's... And, you know, like, that's why I tell people, like, you know, when everyone's like, oh, my favorite, you know, is The Rock. But you got, you always got to give your flowers to the ones that actually influenced, you know, your, your heroes.